Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, HOA made me sign a contract. The second story, B teacher gives me a detention for trying to help a crying kid. The third story, I refused to work with a colleague and he was fired. Today's first story is, how to get rid of a homeowner's association. HOA. A good friend of mine has, about four years ago, inherited the house of his grandparents. He decided to live there for the time being, till he's decided what to do with the house. He grew up in it, so he did not really want to sell it. Not even a week after he moved in, he got a visit from a neighborhood committee. They said there were three board members of the HOA and are here so he can sign his membership papers. They were extremely nosy and rude. For example, one tried to get into the garage without so much as asking. When he stopped him and asked where he wanted to go, he had the audacity to say, I need to check your garage if everything there is in order. I have a right to do this bi-weekly and denying me access is an offense that will cost a fine. He then had enough of their audacity and kicked them out of the house. While doing so, one of the board members shoved some papers into his face and told him he needed to sign this right now. He would live there a week already and this paper had to be signed before moving in. Once they were gone, he took a look at the papers. They were effing ridiculous and gave the HOA rights that were simply uneffing real. They had, for example, a right to visit your home bi-weekly and check things like that you do not use the garage for storage, don't have gasoline on containers in your garage, same goes for gas. You had to mow your lawn every week, snow had to be shoveled every two hours when it snowed, starting at 5 o'clock in the morning. You could not park more than one car on your grounds, except inside the garage, and a ton of other BS. A few days later they came back and asked him why he did not sign the papers yet. They also wanted to check the garage again. This time he would not even let them in and told them he would never become a member of their stupid club. To them, that meant war. Within a week they had sent him fines north of $1,000, several of which were for denying them access to his home, each worth $250. My friend simply did not take them seriously and used their stupid letters to help fire his grill. Then came the day where they went extremely too far. He came back and one of the board members had broken into his garage, stood in it and was writing things down on his notepad. But that was not even the worst part. He had two wonderful oak trees in the front of the house. They had been planted by his great-grandparents when they were newlyweds and moved into the house. The HOA was in the process of taking them down. They had called a professional crew for this. One was already so damaged, basically all twigs were already down. It was just a stump that was left. The other one they had just started with. He effing lost it. He told the tree crew to stop right the F now and explained to them that he was the owner and what they did was highly illegal. They had no idea, since the board member claimed these trees were in violation of the rules, since supposedly too many leaves went to the neighbor's garden. He had told them that was no legal reason to put them down, but the board member claimed I had given my okay, because the trees were in violation of rules of the HOA. He looked it up later. They actually had a bylaw that if a garden produces more than one 40-liter sack of leaves within two weeks, the garden owner needs to take down the offending trees within two weeks. He told them he would overlook them trespassing if they would be witnesses in court for him. Then he called the cops on the board members for trespassing, breaking and entering. They actually had used a bolt cutter to get into the garage. He had always closed it with a big effing bike lock after they had tried to get in twice before. The process must have been glorious. Not only did they have to repay him for the lock in the tree, which was worth an SH ton of money, north of 50000 if I remember right, plus damages for the second tree. He had a professional tree person look after it, so all the damage healed properly, which alone cost over 1000 but these idiots actually thought the trial would have been unfair and tried to fight it, which probably cost them an additional 10 to 15 k in lawyers and court costs. All in all, this trial must have cost them over $120,000. Then he went to yet another civil court and sued them for emotional damage. He told them how much these trees meant to him since his great-grandparents had planted them with seeds from the home country. He really laid it on as thick as he could. Plus, he felt threatened by the HOA and can hardly sleep because he always fears they try to get into his house. The court actually bought it and gave him $500,000 plus the cost for a state-of-the-art alarm system so he can feel safe again in his own home. So put all together, he cost the HOA nearly $750,000. They had to file for bankruptcy and get a person to check the books so my friends would get his money. The best is for last. The mediator found out that these three peas had been defrauding the HOA for well over 10 years and were giving out as many fines as they possibly could so they could use it to bolster their income. All three had to sell their houses so they could pay out my friend. Now he is for most people one of the favorite people living there and he constantly gets invited over for grilling and whatnot. 
You see, most people never wanted the HOA in the first place, but the board member practically forced them to sign the contract, claiming it would not be optional, and if they did not sign before moving, it would be a $500 fine. Only six of the over 50 members actually wanted this HOA, and people think they did get part of the action, as reward for spying out their neighbors to find violations. The second story is, give me a detention, have fun with that apology. Okay, so this happened nine years ago. First thing is, you'll need a bit of history. My mom grew up in a small farming town. A hundred people live in the village even today. And because of some choices her parents and some older brothers had made, the family was not popular. She was bullied relentlessly by fellow students, teachers, and even the school principal. Another story how she got petty revenge on him. She moved away as soon as she could and lived overseas for over 20 years. During this time, she met a Canadian guy and had myself and my little brother. Due to family illness, however, we all moved to her home country. After my granddad died and mid-nasty divorce, the only house we could get was just outside this village, about 30 minutes from the main town of the area. This resulted in me and my brother attending the same primary school, years 1 to 6, as our mom did some 30 years before. Now the school had around 90 to 100 students attending and one classroom for each year level. I was introduced into the school for the start of year 2. My brother is 3 years younger than me, so he didn't attend school yet. I'm the type of student to either be doing my work or reading quietly, speaking only when spoken to. My Canadian accent in the small town didn't help the fact that people already knew who my mom was, and so the kids that had bullied my mom got their kids to bully me. No chance of me making friends. Anyway, I hated the year two teacher. Why too with a passion? She was always calling on me when I just wanted to do my work and nitpicking answers like she did no one else. I ended up being friends with no students and all the teachers and admin staff and principal bar her. When I told my mom about her, she recognized the name. Turned out Y2 was the teacher she had hated the most at that school too. I survive her class and go on to the next year very glad to be rid of her. Fast forward four years and I'm in my last year at the school. Almost everyone takes buses home, being a farming community, and every bus has an area where kids are supposed to assemble and be checked off so no one is left behind. I get given the responsibility for my line as I'm easily the most responsible kid there. Keep in mind though I'm still only 10. I'm known to teachers as being honest, as the year before I found a $50 note and handed it into the office instead of keeping it. My bus line happens to be right beside Y2's class, so sometimes she comes outside to see why we're being loud, if it's extra noisy that day. On this particular day, I've finished my head count and my line is waiting for the bus to pull up so I can lead them over. I notice one of the smaller kids, first or second year, is crying, so I go over and sit beside him to see what's wrong. The crying draws the attention of Y2, who comes outside and sees me consoling this kid and somehow draws the conclusion that I did something to make him cry. It doesn't matter what I or the kids say, she's giving me my first and to this day only detention. Next day, all lunchtime in her class. It doesn't bother me as much as it could as I usually just sit in the library and read all lunch because the librarian knows she can trust me alone in there, but that's not the point. So next day I head to her classroom at lunch, as instructed, and sit and read. She's not happy that it isn't really a punishment for me, but what is she going to do? About halfway through lunch, the principal pops her head into the room to check how things are going and does a double take on seeing me there. She discreetly writes me a note telling me to come see her in her office after lunch and that she'll let my teacher know I'll be late and on her walk through, slips it into my book without Y2 noticing. Lunch finishes and I go to the principal. She asks me what happened to get me in trouble and I tell her that Y2 wouldn't listen even when the other kid told her I was trying to cheer him up. She hums and sends me back to class. At the end of the week, we have school assemblies with all students and teachers present, parents invited, nothing special. This one was a little different though. At the end of the assembly, Y2 stands up. I've never seen her look so small. She was forced by the principal to apologize to me for giving me a wrongful detention in front of 90 to 100 kids, all of her coworkers and around 10 sets of parents. She was very respectful after that and it even got her off my little brother's back. One of the most satisfying moments of my life, and my mom was also very happy when I told her. The last story is, try to bully me, new boss? This will be your shortest job ever. Back in the day, I worked as an independent IT consultant and was hired on along with another independent to subcontract on a team for a major consulting house. We'll call it CH. Everyone else on the team was a CH employee. The two of us were not supposed to tell the client that we weren't part of CH, but the client figured it out pretty fast because we independents were doing most of the work while CH's code monkeys were busy filling out spreadsheets all day and going on team building exercises. But I digress. The project ran past its initial deadline and my contract expired. I stayed on a week to week basis as professional courtesy to get the project finished because I liked the client, if not the team. Unfortunately, the CH project manager was booked somewhere else for his next gig and they brought in a new guy to replace him. 
Let's call him David Stress. David flew in on a Monday morning to get the project handed off to him and immediately started peeing on everything to mark his territory. He was derogatory and belittling to the team and liked to raise his voice. I was working in my office, well actually a closet with folding tables that I shared with three other team members, and didn't hear what he was saying out in the main room, but I could sure hear his tone. Then he burst into the office and demanded, how are we doing specific payroll related conversion task? I said, we're using program X. He waved his hand dismissively and scoffed, that's stupid, program X won't work for this, you need to do something else. The other indie was in the room at the time and she saw me coming up out of my chair. She told me later she thought I was going to deck him. I knew he was full of SH because I wrote program X. It was custom code for this project and he had no way of knowing what it would or wouldn't do. He was just trying to bully me and be the alpha dog. I did not deck him. Instead, I went to the client's payroll manager with whom I'd been working closely for months and who was driving the client side of the project. I laid it on the line. I said, look, I know you know I don't work for CH. I'm here on an independent contract. That contract is up and I've been working here week to week just to get you guys through. She told me she was aware of this. Okay, this new guy David Stress is a bully and a blowhard and I won't work with him. I have no contract at this point and with him running the project, I won't be back next week. I'm not asking you to do anything specific about it, I'm just letting you know as a courtesy so you can plan to transition my work to someone else. She sat back in her chair, thought a moment and said, okay, thanks for letting me know. Two hours later, David Stress was removed from his new position. The payroll manager faced with losing the one technical guy on the team who actually knew what was going on with a very complicated payroll system, called CH and said, we don't want this new guy, take him away. CH rearranged some things to keep the original project manager with the project. The funniest part of the whole thing was that CH had scheduled a welcome dinner for David at a posh steakhouse that evening. Rather than create the further embarrassment of canceling the dinner, they actually went ahead with it as a farewell dinner for David, who'd been on the project for less than one day. It was fun to watch him try to put on a brave face for that. Yes, I did stay with the project to the end after that, and yes, they went live successfully. Thank you for watching.